you served in the US military. What can you tell us about the unit who, who did this raid and, and what kind of preparations would they have undertaken before such a, an important raid? Yeah, the units would probably be something like SEAL Team or SEAL Team 6 or SFOD, uh, type of special operations, uh, operators that are trained specifically for hostage rescue or some type of strike mission. Um, the training is going to be intense, and it, it appeared to be from the first reports that they might have known about the compound since August or maybe at the latest only a few weeks ago. And depending on how much time the team, when they were called up to train for this, is what they would do. Typically for a compound, they would actually rebuild a compound, mock it up almost exactly like the compound, and they'd have the specs from eyes on target, from human intelligence, from satellite photos. And they go through hundreds if not thousands of iterations of the exact drill, timing when the guards move, walking through again, again, first a walk through, then, then a run through, then a live ammo, um, actually, you know, over and over and over and over again, timing how they're going to take out the guards and then enter the compound. So um, it's a real precision operation. It is a precision operation. It's much more than people think. It's almost just like for the, the job that we have every day, whatever we're doing, we go to the office, we you know, prep our reports and so forth. They do that every minute every day preparing for the mission and then when it's a go time then they go. Now it seems, it seems to be clear that Pakistani officials were not told about this operation beforehand. Uh, how, how would they get in and out of Pakistan and, and conduct a, an operation on their soil without Pakistani military knowing? Yeah, there's a few ways that that would happen. Um, there's some reports that they were on a carrier and then moved into inland at some point, uh, possibly some uh, kind of joint mission in which they didn't exactly tell the Pakistanis what they were doing. Or what we would typically do would be drop fuel blivets and have a field site close enough by where our helicopters could come in, refuel at those blivet sites, which are not going to be, they're going to be under the radar, not known, and then launch the mission from there, a logger site. So there's a couple ways that that would happen, but there's absolutely no way they let any Pakistani official know when they were going to make that move. David Crow, what's been the uh, reaction in Canberra today? Oh, a very, very cautious one. Uh, one of the questions being put to Julia Gillard and Tony Abbott today was, do you trust the Pakistanis, given the circumstances of this bin Laden uh, killing? Uh, neither has answered the question directly. Julia Gillard's been very careful to point out that um, the Pakistanis uh, people uh, suffer from terrorism just like others, and that bin Laden's death was in their interest as well. Um, that's pretty much as far as she's gone. Uh, Tony Abbott uh, hasn't gone any further than that. It's, it's just too tricky to, uh, to look like you're criticising uh, an ally of ours. Uh, one thing that Kevin Rudd said this morning was that Pakistan does have some questions to answer about, um, about uh, the way in which uh, bin Laden was kept at that compound for so long. Um, I think that's very interesting given the statements coming out of the States about how much investigative work they're going to be doing in Pakistan to, to look for bin Laden's supporters and benefactors there. That's true. George Giddos is an Australian war artist and documentary maker who spent a lot of time in both Afghanistan and Pakistan. And George has shot some of his uh, films in Abbottabad, where Osama bin Laden has been hiding. And I spoke to him on Skype from Houston earlier today. George Giddos, thanks for talking to us. Hey, it's great just to hear the Australian accent again, Steve. How are you going? I'm, I'm going very well, thanks. Now, George, what, why we're talking to you today is that you've spent a fair bit of time filming in Abbottabad. Were you surprised to hear that that's where Osama bin Laden was hiding out? You know, it's really funny, Steve. Um, about a week ago, they uh, caught... Well, they, they admitted that the Pakistanis had Uma Patek, who's the mastermind behind the Bali bombings. He was the guy the Americans had a million dollar ransom on. And when I'm showing the film, everyone comes out and says, is Bin Laden dead? Where is he? And I said, well, they'll probably find him in a Abbottabad where they found uh, Patek. And, and, and so I've been a bit prophetic, you know. It's, uh, I, I always suspected that they had him in a safe house somewhere, like an advanced luxury jail, and I think that's what it was. And most Pakistanis felt that ISI had him, and um, yeah, so so I'm not I'm not at all surprised. I knew he's alive because so many people there just felt his heartbeat. They just knew that he was alive. It only seemed that in Australia and America, people were sceptical about him being alive, but certainly not in Pakistan. You mentioned Umar Patek, who was a, a conduit between JI and Al Qaeda, and was associated with the Bali bombing. Uh, That's correct. That hasn't been reported on very much. The fact that he was caught in about about earlier this year. How significant do you think that was? I think it's enormously significant because 
Uh, his son was going to a college there studying telecommunications, so he's, you know, he's rooted. And uh, imagine he probably knew bin Laden was there. Uh, Pakistanis got him and they've kept him away from the CIA. Uh, he, he could have blown the whistle. I mean, um, so if, 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 if the conspiracy theory is true, and it seems to be that the ISI were keeping him there, uh, it was very important for them to get uh, Patek before the CIA did. And they're not, still not letting the CIA talk to him. They're talking about um, sending him back to Indonesia where uh, the charges have probably been dropped. I've been watching him, like any Australian concerned about the Bali bombing. That was our 9-11 and I wanted to see him caught. So uh, it surprises me that few people haven't connected the dots, particularly in Australia. It's fascinating too that Osama bin Laden stayed in Abbottabad after Patek was caught. It is, isn't it? Um, it really is, because that was putting such a big focus on them. I also wonder whether there's a connection with uh, Raymond Davis. Uh, American paid two and a half million bucks to get him out of the country, blood money. Uh, was he one of the observers? Uh, is that why, why there was such a fuss to get him out of jail? Um, I think books will be written about this. Uh, it, it, what, what's also interesting, I always suspected that he wasn't in a Pashtun area. I went before the election, um, the first election which Obama won, both he and George Bush said they were certain that uh, bin Laden was in Bajor province. Well, at great risk, I went to Bajor province and I spoke to all the tribal elders there. And they said, George, you're not even famous and everyone knows you're here. If bin Laden was here, we would know. And it's true that anyone in a tribal area, because there's so many disloyalties, so many tribal en enmities, that nothing can be kept secret. So. I, I always felt that he'd be in a very urban um, Pashtun, in this case, um, Abadabad's uh, Hazara, and they don't even speak Pashtun, they speak Inca. So, um, you know, that, that was one place where you could probably keep rumours contained a bit more. Uh, I, I particularly love Abadabad because the people are liberal-minded there, so when I need to do my... Uh, Film scenes where I had the girls shaking their breasts and wiggling their hips, we could never do that anywhere where they were fundamentalists and we'd take them to a bad bad where the locals didn't mind. George, uh, it's, it's very interesting too that Abadabad is associated with the military. There's an academy there. How could Osama yeah, bin Laden was... possibly have hidden out in Abadabad with some Absolutely military officials so close by like, without the ISI, uh, uh, the Pakistan military uh, intelligence, uh, uh, knowing where he was? Look, I often arrived late at night at a bad bad, um, and it's very hard to find accommodation because it's really where rich military, retired military officers live, including a lot of the retired ISI people who know a hell of a lot. So um, that's where they have their retirement houses because it's high and they miss the grueling heat of uh, Pakistani summer. It's a resort area, and... Um, you know, I'm sure I've driven past that building, I, I half remember it, um, look, looking for accommodation. Uh, and by the time I've just gone to a few hotels, everyone knows I am there, they know what I'm doing, they know everything about me. And, uh, you know, so the military would have had to have known that Bin Laden was there. And we're not talking about some secret underground, you know, sub, sub, sub uh, military. We're talking about the equivalent of West Point. Uh, that's the most elite academy where the, the children, the sons of the Musharraf go to learn to, you know, do their military training. So, uh, and, and the house that he was in was very, very close within their precinct. But it wasn't in a restricted area. Uh, it was the kind of area that I would have been driving past looking for a hotel. George Giddos, thanks very much for talking to us. And Pete, some of the rhetoric coming out from punters in the US is that we've closed the circle now, it's over. Uh, are they going to expect the, the people in America for the troops to be coming home from Afghanistan? Yeah, there's going to be a much louder voice now to call this victory. So both in Iraq and Afghanistan, we really haven't had a clear vision of what victory would be. And so basically taking out bin Laden, now that gives a chance to call this an immediate victory and get out. Whether that's what the government does or not, that's going to be, wait to be seen because this, the ramifications of bin Laden being killed is immense. It's going to change both domestic and foreign policy. But that voice is getting louder now to say, yes, we have victory, let's get out and be done.